Hello and welcome back, everyone, as we are preparing for game three of our best of five series here at Blue Otter. Take game two, and it is a tied one to one on the scorecard. And I have to issue a formal apology to Lawrence there. He had such a performance, and uh, at the very end, when he gets his quadra kill, basically, botched the call. But let's yeah. talk about him as recompense sure. beat down because he used to go by Speedo. Now, Lawrence. It's been oh such God, a journey yeah. for him to get back to this level of play. He had that time at Cloud9 Academy and then a couple proving grounds, but he's still trying to prove he is able to make that leap up to the NACL. Yeah, and it's been, what, two years now almost since that happened. So it'll be quite a while, or it has been quite a while. And if he's able to successfully make yeah. that jump back into tier two, I mean, this is what we always say, Kangas. The path to pro is not linear. And even if Lawrence doesn't make it all the way, the fact that it's still possible that he could take another step up in his journey. That's a good point. And I think that performances like that last game, great arguments for the player sure. to say, hey, I am ready, because Denethor was one of the people at the top of my list of top laners to make the jump next. I was fully expecting, even, even by summer, Denethor is going to be in NACL, whether it's through the team that qualifies or somebody scouting him I oh, need once that. the little season's over. I need that. But I mean, he just got kind of bodied by Lawrence. I mean, there's no two ways around it. He had a great like level one, level two, but from that moment onward, Lawrence controlled that lane. So I think top lane very spicy here but let's take a look at the updated uh, fearless bands because we now have two games under our belt beat i'm going to set you up to talk about this one again what are the big picks that are off the table for either of these teams or both these teams because actually i'm realizing jinx is the only overlap yeah. and renekton renekton i was gonna say uh jinx is out renekton is out uh i don't want to say renekton is a, a top lane crutch because I, I don't know if that's quite true but he is like the strongest mm. blind right now so now that he's out of the picture and uh, Jax isn't available for Denethor either. I wonder what is going to show up on the top side, especially because Winthrop have chosen blue side for this game. And that doesn't mean that more than likely Denethor is going to have to blind. Yeah, I think it's a good point to bring up because I believe Renekton won both games, right? Uh, think... Yes, he did. Yeah, he's yeah. a good champion. He is a good champion. Guess. Very hard to counter pick him in the current meta. Denethor tried his best there with that Jax, but uh, obviously did not work out. Now with that off the table, it's going to mean that the top lane maybe goes back to Denethor favorite. We'll see if that is the case. As still these mid lane bans, man. I we're never going to get Zoe. I want everyone to at least witness one Sammy can Zoe game yeah. just to really see what he can do in this champion and why it's banned against him every single time. But we're probably. You know, I honestly, personally, even though I kind of agree with you, I respect the fact that we have dropped ego and we banned the pocket picks. Because how many people True. would it? How many people had to learn last year when IMT uh, challengers were around and Bolulu was slapping people left and right on this Good pick? Point. And, you know, some people had to learn their lesson. It's looking like the qualifier teams already have. Yeah, we got a couple of Zoe. Uh, not one tricks, but Zoe mains in North America when Belolu was around. Even shout out to Nebula, another mid laner that was True. trying out uh, during the off season. Uh, Sammy Kin, I mean, we even got from his interview, though, he thinks that he's that next mid laner to come in. And uh, I, I'm so happy he picked Toasty as his got a rival that he's looking at. That's cool. Right now, he's got to keep his eyes on Sword, though, because Sword had an incredible game one, decent game two as well. And now Winthrop will have to lock in their first champion here in game three. It's not going to be Varus, Oriana, or Nico, as those were the bands. Yeah, and I'm wondering what mid lane is going to be looking like. I can't imagine we are going to first pick it, but as we're getting a little later into the series, uh, I'm still thinking about Rise for Sword. I'm still thinking about Huey for Samikin yep. at the the back Ooh. of my mind. But considering Jinx is, isn't available for either team of Felios, it yep. was banned earlier, and something that I think Mobility is uh, happy to grab immediately. Yeah, one of the champions that I kind of associate with mobility anyway. This was one of his favorites when he was playing at the tier two level. So like Adam this Zaya. here. Yeah, and Zaya as well. So Draven being hovered by Blue Otter, that'd be a bold move. It's kind of putting all of your eggs in one basket, but instead a pivot to Ezreal as the answer to Aphelios. Interesting. Uh, I mean, Ezreal was also played by, I believe Blue Water had already played it. Yeah, Lynx played it in their previous series against Mirage Alliance. I want to say it was an Ezreal Ash bot lane. There was a lot of poke uh, <laughs> and a lot of CC coming through because of that Ash. And I'm wondering if that's the route they end up going down because, you know, Ash Prowls dropped off a little bit. Yeah, Ash is available. I don't like Ash really with the Aphelios. I feel like you're just too weak and susceptible to being Dove and Ganks. Um, so I don't expect Winter to take it away. Huey. Oh, I meant for Blue Otter. 
Yeah, yeah, and, uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doubling down on that because oh, okay, Hui, great. I think, is a higher prio pick, so you can save the Ash. You're not expecting that's to be true. picked away, so just pick the Hui instead right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see if that's the decision. And I think uh, you, in doing so, you've already set yourself up for a lot of poke, and wow, okay, so the pocket the pick, it ends up being the Aurelian Soul. So you have a lot of late game scaling as a result, I will say. The thing that's really nice about Asol, especially later on, is the range at which he is able to interact with you. So having Ezreal, having Huey, it does make that feel a tiny bit better, but this champ is still True. pretty busted. Yeah, I actually am happy you bring that up because Aurelian Soul's greatest strength is like the range when he ability stacks to up his Q. Ugh. Oh, yeah, it's but disgusting. Ezreal and Huey, they can play out of that range at least in the earlier Little levels. Bit, yeah. So we'll see how Sword's able to get on top of them. The Rex side pick, though, let's talk about that one here. Who do you think plays it, Music or Lawrence? It's Lawrence. I think I think Rexai okay. Top is just too good right now to not play. And we talked about blinds. It ends up being Lawrence who's happy to take that spot away. And mm -hmm. considering now, it's something we see our three top lane. Ban away some responses in like this case the Nar and the Glen. And it means that now you're set up to pick Music's jungle pick, which is uh I wanna call it his famous volley bear if he locks that in, because last spring when he first came into NACL, he was the one of the few people who were playing it. I thought that was cool. And it sucked. And back it is then. locked in? Okay, I still I got flashbacks to biting the <laughs> turret, but you know that's not the a first volley bear game aside. We are really hyped for it. Uh, Music has also shown this proficiency out of this champion and what he can actually do when he's able to get that lead and snowball. And with a Rexai, top lane's gonna be very scary for Denethor. You get counter pick Ooh. here, but you need to pick something safe because you are gonna be susceptible to dives. And Thresh paired with the Aphelios as the support. So I'm curious, Jeez. Rovex, I think, has a lot of options for the R5-2. That's what I'm most interested in right now, because uh, you have that support counter, you're playing into Thresh. Uh, now Ash feels a little more dangerous, but I'm wondering uh, if we see something like maybe the Pike come through. We know that's the Rovex special. Does he go for a, a ranged angle? Pike, I think, would be hard later on into the game, but you do have that early game threat. So let's see what he locks in. I d I, I, it is a sound to me beat down. How many times did you just say a champion's name and then they're hovered immediately? It's not locked in yet. I was thinking the Huey could potentially be flexed to the bot lane and then they could get a mid counter, but they're happy with the mid counter. They lock in the pike. Wow. All right, we got an action-packed bot lane this time around, or at least action-packed support. Maybe not going to be in the 2v2, but at least yeah. can get around the map and back up this volley bear. Yeah, and I, I find this one really interesting, not just because of how things are going to interact bot lane, but the roams. We know Rovex, yeah. uh, he's able to be all over the map in general, but especially on a pick like this. And a thing that, you know, to my chagrin, that is good about Aurelian Soul is how safe his laning phase is if you don't have a lot of CC that you're worried about. Well, now Pike is here, you know, that bone skewer, it can add to that little bit of danger. And it's part of this jungle support and maybe even top side where Blue Otter can find some advantages in that early game, some early skirmishing. Yeah, you have to worry about Pike coming to your lane. You have to worry about Volley yeah. Bear in your lane as oh, well. Yeah. Volley Bear, no slouch for those early ganks if he chooses to go for them. Winthrop University, an interesting composition that they've drafted for themselves, but I think that they're going to be on the back of a lot of the plays and a lot of the tempo. We'll see if they can wrestle with that as we are loaded in to game number three. This do or die best of five. Winthrop University taking on Blue Otter. Yeah, so the and the thing I didn't get to talk about yet is the Aatrox there for Denethor. And it's a champ that's had a super high prio overall. And I think if we're looking at a team like Blue Otters where a lot of them want to move forward into you, I think in general as Aatrox, you are going to like that. But there is a lot of CC and there's still a lot of range to deal with. So I think it's going to be up to Denethor and, of course, the artist formerly known as Trickster to be able to get in there, make space for mobility and sword because you're right, Kangas. They scale. And that late game, the damage is going to be there. And also, I don't necessarily see the Xin Zhao and Aatrox as the dominant space-making champions. Xin Zhao, uh, conditionally, if you have the ultimate available, can make a lot of space. Sure. But you're also going to be on top of a Rek'Sai, Volley Bear, and Pike. Those are three champions that are happy <laughs> to be inside like, oh, of that you wanna, circle with you're you. You're walking towards me? You're right? approaching me? <laughs> Cue the that just JoJo makes my lead. job easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So Blue Otter actually starting off here. I like music it. with a bit of an invade onto the Raptor camp. 
And uh, they got some vi early vision down, which I really like as well. And I will say this is a good look for music. I'm curious now, though, if he's going to end up taking more. The answer is yes. I'm wondering if they're going to get an idea uh, that this has actually happened. Uh, honestly, the pings are going to end up being really telling. Oh, wait, this is a big deal. So music expire. could get level two. Exactly. That ward's going to expire before he gets there. So this could be a huge gank if he wants it. He's going for the full clear. And as of right now, the Xin Zhao has not realized. We have not seen any pings from Winthrop to indicate that he knows. He's going to go towards these wolf camps. He's up basically a camp behind on just natural clear speed to begin with. Bot wave is shoving in. This could be disastrous for Winthrop University. If music's not spotted on this wave right here, he shouldn't nope. be. He can look for the gank. His bot lane needs to be level two first, and as soon as that happens, he's going to come running. And Zinjaz coming down. It's actually Winthrop that opt for the 2v2. Chookies walks up, mobility in trouble, but they say, no, nope, just go for the guaranteed kill on the Thrash. First blood, the Lynx, and an incredible start for Music. Look at Zinjao just now realizing, oh, okay, my bot camps are gone. I got to go for an invade top. Honestly, a great opener coming through from Blue Otter, and it couldn't have gone off more flawlessly. Now you can see the Xin Zhao, he's going to try and invade to try and take away uh, Raptor's camp, but I don't know how much he's going to actually be able to take away as Music makes his way up there. Plus, the spot lane, it's moving away from mobility. In that 1v2, he can't actually interact with the wave. Even if he gets all the top camps, it's still worth it for Music because he got yeah. the gank off, but Music is walking up there to stop it. 1v1 top side, meanwhile. As Lawrence will back off, not fully committing on to Denethor there. And there's the smite away. Trickster does pick up the camp, the buff. Samikin gets a little bit of damage on top of him, but Music will actually look to fight him at the scuttle. I do like that. Don't give yeah. it for free. Might as well stop him. Lawrence again trading aggressively against Denethor, trying to get this wave to crash. Yeah, it's oh. uh, pretty hard. You get out sustained oh. pretty hard as uh, oh, or by no. Rek'Sai top, and Trickster, that's right. You your top laner needs you, and I Flash. think it's too little, it's too late. Denethor is getting dove right now, we'll miss the Q1, but ooh, Music and Lawrence actually call it off. They're gonna back off instead. Surprised, actually, that they had the patience to not go for that play. I thought they would just full commit. Fair enough. Uh, I think they didn't like the angle Denethor had leveled up, so I think that ends up being a fine call. And now Music has, uh, I mean, some camps to farm still. I think the only downside to this is that Music isn't actually going to get any uh, real lead. Oh, hold on. Nice Ooh, hook. Rovex hooked Mobility back in the lantern, I believe. Mobility yeah, was not did. expecting it. So, actually still trades just fine on the Lynx. That is heal and ignite used by Blue Otter. Yeah, and, and something I do want to highlight. So, even though Music did steal an entire quadrant, I think this ends up uh, not working out so great for him individually because now you can see uh, the Zin, Zin has that leveled up Raptors camp that is way more XP. Ooh, oh, that sentence. Oh, he's fine. Waiting on the play. Is oh. he fine, though? He's, has to flash away. That's Ignite taken down. He will live through that one. The Rovex has to burn the summoner spell. As now, Zin Jazz on top of Bollybear. Music in trouble. Doesn't have a lot of oh, backup on oh, the team. They oh. are low. Another death sentence lands, and that might be the death sentence oh. for Music. Has flash available. Zin Jiao jumps back in there. A lot of damage. Oh, Flashes for wow. That's a kill. To Xin Zhao, the artist formerly known as Trickster. Wow, we are getting uh, really excited in this early game. We are scrapping it out at any given opportunity. And yet it's still only one-to-one, -one, Kangas. So now you can see that response coming through. And actually, the Zin even gets up further ahead. Sword is here with level six, by the way. He has that ultimate. This could actually be a monumental dive. This would be massive. And actually, Music's just going to walk straight into a death trap. No flash available. No chance of escape, but they can actually keep fighting in. Trickster's low, but Sword picked up the kill. And a death sentence wow. lands again. Shookies wow. just cannot miss these. Double kill over to Sword. Might look for the triple mobility. We'll pick it up. That's just fine. Winthrop University cash in in the bot lane. I mean, prompts to Samikin. Severing Bolt is going to get a kill in exchange. But everything earned in that bottom lane was lost. Yeah, top lane, Denethor might he's chase fine. this down. Yeah, I don't think you want to flash board for anything there. Look at these tunnels, man. <laughs> yeah, God. It's so hard to get on the right side. But we got to give props again 
to Winthrop University. A really great response to a good opener from Blue Otter. And the fact that Sword has had that constant prio. As soon as he ticks level 6, he has his opportunity. Sammy can TP to lane, so there is no response to be had here, except for Music, who walks into his own deck. I guess he just didn't assume that Xin Zhao would stick around. I, I don't know. Maybe don't there either. were pings. Maybe there was miscommunication. The sword went for a reset instead of the dive. No matter what That's happened, weird. what the reality of the situation is, Winthrop have a decent lead now in this early game. Specifically, sword online. That's a lot of stacks on the Asol there. Yeah, it's got to feel very good, especially with those two kills. That he's already going for the Rylai's rush too. So sword, even though we're waiting for him to scale a little bit more. And it, he's going to have a lot of utility already, and especially considering Winthrop are pretty ahead of the game so far. Those slows, they're going to have that extra value. Damikin is up about 10 farm with a kill for himself, so he's feeling okay in this matchup. But you're right that that Rileys will be complete, oh, pr presumably faster than what Samikin's going to build towards. It's a pretty cheap item here. And uh, also the fact that top lane, so it had done for a whole two waves up over his lane opponent. Zik was hovering the bot side, doesn't go for a dive here. Well, instead go back to his side, but look at all that vision that they've invested on the bottom yeah. half of the map. They've, uh, they've given so much towards this, uh, uh, there's so much on this bottom side. So right now I think Lynx and Rovex are still in a good position, Kangas. Even though you know, things got a, a little mixy, I will say. Happy to see oh, Kai on. highlight that. Thank you for our observer that Rek'Sai used Flash during a replay there. Oh. Like Xin Zhao was walking up, so that's why you see Lawrence not having that summoner spell as Shookies takes a good chunk of damage from Link's two-shot barrage in that bot lane, but it's just fine. Can go for a reset here. But that's bad news for Lawrence because Rek'Sai, you still have mobility. You can get away from potential ganks with your burrow, but uh, yeah, Flash is just also used offensively if Music wants to go for a dive here, so... Might be a little harder to get on top of Denethor as it seems like Blue Otter are playing to the top half of the map right now. Yeah, I think bot lane is going to end up being a big focus anyway, so maybe Lawrence is feeling uh, fine about just getting whatever advantages he can in isolation. Because now Music has just ticked over to level 6. Uh, there is really an angle where I imagine he clears top, resets, and just immediately runs bot lane. Robex is about to hit level 6 too. That death from below adding that extra kill threat on an Ophelios who still doesn't quite have flash up. I, that could be an easy way to secure yourself some gold as Blue Otter. That's where he's going to get this wave crashed in and both junglers are on this side of the map. As I say, that music actually goes for a reset, so we will have top priority currently in control of Winthrop. Might not mean too much, though, as it's just going to be waves crashing in. They don't seem to want to make an aggressive play. This is a pretty pivotal moment in the game. If either of these comps can get ahead, really good news for them. As of right now, it's only a 700 lead for Winthrop University, so it's not insurmountable by any means for Blue Otter which means that they are also happy. But, I mean, props to Sammy Kidd. Right as I was saying it before, I'm just noticing now with the builds, actually hits first item uh, on time with Sword there, despite the double kill. And it's the Ludens as well. So there is going to be that extra damage. And, of course, the haste, since uh, those Lost Chapter items ended up getting buffed. He's Ooh. going for the pure damage build this time. Denethor might just get a solo kill topside, but instead it's mid lane. Rovex gets the pullback on the Sword, and the Flash is wow. already used, but Rovex in trouble now. Oh. Sword! On Achilles, Denethor did get the wow. solo kill. I saw it happen off screen there. Lawrence, without that flash, does get punished. So Winthrop just get two kills out of nowhere. And that's huge, winning on both sides of the map, especially top side. The thing that's so nice about Rek'Sai is the fact that you just sustained forever. You're supposed to be really hard to kill, but Denethor finds that angle, punishes yeah. the lack of a flash, and it just adds to the advantage Winthrop have gotten. So I noticed it right as we went to the mid lane play that, yeah, he lands the chains. He has wow, his own yeah. flash. And without Lawrence's flash, I was like, I, that could easily be a solo kill yep. for an Aatrox, despite the fact that Denethor only had two long swords at that time. Now look at the back. Look at the buy that Denethor is coming back to lane with. It's going to be brutal for Lawrence the next time around. Yeah, it's the bright side for Blue Water. Oh, hold on. Oh, and is he, he will be? live. Okay. Through Ophelios ultimate, just barely. If Ophelios has an item, though, you die. Rovex, you got to be careful yep. in situations like that. 
Although does he have to be careful when he's got the team around him? Still ready for a play here. Jack and walk away though. Really good spacing from Sword there, just controlling how Blue Otter can actually walk at the jungler. Yeah, good use of that singularity, and it's a good response to prevent that kill from going through. Robex, even with his low health, he can fish with that ultimate. I'm telling you. Oh, speaking of fishing, Denethor geez. is just gonna bop Lawrence from this yeah, point forward. Like, Aatrox is online right now. Yeah, he is. And now I mean, we're seeing recall a recall come through from Lynx. It's looking like he will go for the Essence Reaver as his first item. And that item spike does make me wonder if it is going to be a Dragon Angle. We do see music topside, of course. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just the green light as soon as they get the notification that, ah, oh, yeah, we can just do this, Drake. So immediately onto that dragon, as you call, Robex is level six and in the area, and we're actually taking Sammy can down here, but Sammy, oh, Chookies, if that death sentence was timed correctly, that would have been a dead way They're on buying our time. screen, or at least a flash. Now teleport, flank coming in from Lawrence, will approach from the bot side. Mobility's wow. in a really bad spot. Nobody's buying space oh, for they the Aphelios, and he's caught by Lawrence. Blue Otter again with the team fights at these objectives, playing them incredibly well. Lawrence is still alive despite all the uh, uh, Aesol damage. Samikin will get one kill though. Aesol's down. Blue Otter are still winning the fight. It's going to be down to Denethor. He's got to pull out a hero play right now, but he's just getting oh. dragged around everywhere. Will dunk down onto Rovex. Two members fall from the side of Blue Otter. It's only Denethor left for Winthrop University, and he's knocked up, he's taken down, shut Woo. down over the links. I will say he made it last long enough that they can't go for the Drake anymore, but that was a pretty successful fight still for Blue Otter, who've been on the back foot since that bot lane play went over to Winthrop. I gotta say, I gotta credit Robex, by the way, for pulling the Drake out. Before this happened, we saw the Drake coming back because he had pulled it out. That delay is actually what allowed this play to happen in the first place and is what's still giving Blue Otter a chance for their second trade. Moments like that, it's terrifying, but really the only way out is to fight in the pit. Mobility did not, I guess maybe nobody spotted Lawrence's TP also, because the way that they were walking there, it seemed like that Rek'Sai came out of nowhere and was not expected. Props to Denethor, like you had said though, he does buy enough time. Even though I mean, he gets the one kill, it's pretty flashy, but it means that it delays the dragon take yeah, it does. from Blue Otter because everybody else gets back onto the rift, and it's still there, so we could just get around two here. Yeah, essentially it minimized what Winthrop ended up losing in that fight because that is still a Blue Otter favorite play, in my opinion. And even still, as their ultimates are coming back online, they have that first touch on the Drake. Winthrop very cautious about whether or not they approached. Interesting call from Winthrop right there. They're low on ults. They don't have one for sword. They're low on flashes. They don't yeah. have swords or Xin Zhao or Denethor, I suppose, for that matter. So, I, I think it's part also that Mobility only just got his first item. Now Lynx has got his and then some. So it's you know the, the damage is there. Like, too. Uh, opted for the boots instead earlier on. Lawrence now in a one v one against Denethor. Don't really expect much to happen here, but as I say that, the sweet spots do be hitting. Right, look, look at that! Look at the state. Look at that healing, man. That is just. Yeah, true. This champ is still not okay, guys. I promise. I do be what Rex I do. Yeah, yeah. And now what Winthrop do is they're gonna secure the Herald since they have that opening on the map. Nice way for them to get some gold back in their pockets. Maybe knock down a mid tier one, top tier one. Oh, pick your tier one, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, you got options here for Winthrop you University. Do. They also had those three grubs, that, but they weren't able to get onto the second stack. Blue Otter got two of them, so it will just be the Herald charging. As Blue Otter will now be on the defense here. Try and track where Xin Zhao will look to drop it and either stop it in his tracks or get something else on the other side of the rift. Right now it's Rovex going for some deep vision. He'll see Sword, and he's got music behind him. Good CC. So oh, yeah, they trouble. got him, though. Has the flash available, but here comes music. Can just ult and oh. turn off the turret, but Sword's out of there. Interesting call. I feel like maybe with the pike damage that would have been enough, but they didn't have faith. I think the thing there that would have made it work is if Music had Flash, because if they're tracking Swords, they know it isn't up, or they know Swords is up, so it's too risky of a play. Sure. Yeah, I guess best case scenario, you just get the Flash. Now Winthrop yeah. making the most out of all those members they just saw bot side. Two Herald Charges in a turret, and a lot of damage on the next one. Yeah, so it's just gonna end up being turret for a turret. Uh, across the map here as Rovex is here to make sure nothing else crazy ends up happening. 
I mean, for the most part, now that that's out of the picture, it's just going to be about this next dragon for me in three minutes' time. We were talking about Infernal Soul from Blue Water last game, Kangas. Well, you know, we got what we asked for about a, a game late. Yeah. So, and and that is what soul. they're playing for now. Their soul point is coming up very soon. Yo, Ezreal with Infernal Soul. Huey with Infernal Soul. These I mean, is that, is that just not crazy? It's it's just oppressive at that point. And uh, Sammy Ken is having a great game. Lynx is having a great game. The two carries for Blue Otter, along with Lawrence in the top side. Uh, it feels like Winthrop have had a couple of tempo plays, but they haven't gotten the gold back in their favor. Blue Otter are still in a lead, and they're looking for Sword right now. Oh! Just trying to help out. Gets hit by the Fear Fleeing away, and he's got nowhere to run to. Music on the invade. Big dunk down. That's the bear we're looking for. As Sword now in trouble. Had the flash available, but Singularity will not be enough to save his life. Sammy Kin on a killing spree will pick that one up. And it's just play after play for the side of Blue Otter. And they just continue to maintain this control on the bottom side of the map. I, they have wards in that river. They're constantly taking Sword either away from the wave or they're taking him off the map entirely. And that kind of pressure, it slows down the Aurelian Soul scaling. And it means that as long as they maintain bot side control, the next Drake is going to be even easier for them. Plus, Kangas, why don't you take a look at uh, mid CS right now? If you're sword, are you feeling good? Be real. No, uh, beat down. That's uh, the right as answer. As a mid laner yourself, I, I I believe you would also know that. Was that that was a rhetorical question? Right? No, That's I did want you to answer. To be fair, okay. and there okay, was good. only one right answer. So good job, you proved yourself it. yet nice, again. Nice. You're two All for right. two, man. Respect. Had myself on the back after that one. Yeah, As you I, should. You know, 173 bigger number than 152. Yes. Um, oh that's my god. Usually how I kind of come to those uh, those outcomes. Sammy Ken having a great series so far. Yeah. I think that one of the reasons that we highlighted him was his ability to get these leads. Despite the fact that Sword got a double kill in that bot lane dive, which is very impressive. Sammy Ken has been able to maintain his individual lead regardless. And now Blue Otter looking to use that lead and the vision they have on this bottom side of the map to get control. We're 40 seconds to that aforementioned soul point, and Winthrop very afraid of letting this one go. The thing is, they may not have a choice. Sword doesn't have access to that Skies Descend, the upgraded Aurelian soul. Oh, we already highlighted how far behind he is right now. It might actually be a sack the Drake angle. See if they do go for that. Right now, they're in two different spots at the same time. Death Sentence does land on the same. He can't, no flash available. That's disastrous for Blue Water. They will trade one, but it's just the support. Winthrop, they can turn on the Lynx, try and get damage onto the Ezreal, but Lawrence trying to save the play. They're on a sword. Sword down. Rovex gets the kill credit for that one. Mike getting resets is a scary thing as Winthrop will now have to fight down a member and down all chances of contesting this dragon. Blue Otter, absorb the play and dish it right back. Blue Otter's just warming up in game one, apparently, Kangas, because they smoked Winthrop in game two and they're ripping them to shreds here in this third ah. game. Yes, Denethor is going to really be able funny. to get away. Yeah, but you know what? That's paltry compared to what's been lost. Yeah. I mean, the death sentence was big, but it takes a while for Sammy Kim to go down. Yeah, I again, the Skies Descent wasn't there for Sword. Watch Lynx. Look at how much attention he has garnered. Yeah. The Arcane Shift, the Flash, it just buys so much time to get Robex in a position where he can start resetting. And the fact that they committed so much to barely touch Lynx's health bar, I, this fight was just never going to happen. Blue Otter's composition is just so hard to keep track of. And that was such a chaotic approach that they had to that fight. It just started yeah. with two people staring each other down and everyone like, all right, we'll commit. And then the fact that Blue Otter got on the other side of Winthrop, I think that Winthrop just weren't expecting that much of an answer uh, once they tried to get onto Link. So, back to live here. We're looking for another I, pick. Oh my god. And there it is. Xin Zhao's down right near the Baron. And and that right there is what I was talking about in Champ Select, Kangas. I, you have the Hui, you have the Ezreal. The fact that you're able to interact from so far out of Winthrop's range, no matter what champion we're talking about, is so powerful, and it's even more impressive when you have this lead. Now it's an easy Baron. Yeah, bot tier one is traded for it, but who cares, man? That's a trade you take every day of the week. And we highlighted the pike early on in draft, or at least as soon as we saw it, getting on the map. Rovex has been doing just that. Constantly finding these picks. Denethor heavily pushing onto this turret, has the team behind him. 
but not that close. Okay, they make it in time. Before it gets out of there. Looking a little precarious, though. Oh, wow. Robex. Okay, you know, maybe we don't have to roam this far away. Very uh, tough spot to be in, but he has he's a lot fine. of ability, so he's fine. Yeah, it's, it's okay. And this is, again, like, this is just what we've been seeing the whole time. Robex has been taking great pains. Oh, oh. hold on. This ends on the Lawrence. He's quite tanky, but they will have enough damage to take him down. So many members of Winthrop commit to that play. They lose the top turret, but it is going to be a 5v4 on the map for the next 40 seconds. I mean, still, the trade up is there for Blue Otter. It's going to be a top tier 2 in exchange. That's double the gold that you just gained, but it's tough because in this position, when, when you're behind like this, Kangas, that is the right play for Winthrop. You all in on one side and hopes that you can actually get the wave into a spot where you can finally contest some neutral vision. The problem is that time isn't quite right now. Oh. Okay, damage interrupts the Q. Oh, got Rovex Holy in trouble, now take it. Sultan. Oh, timed out. The one become lightning, extra range, not available anymore, so Rovex gets out of there. So nice. Got some fancy feet coming through from Rovex. Nothing to do with uh, his champ having impossible to uh, being impossible to catch up to. Yeah, and yeah, no. yeah, like, yeah exactly. Ability definitely not a headache for nope. anybody. Nope. No uh, support player, you can attest to this. Okay. Well, eight seconds. Uh, yeah. No, Pike is very hard to get on top. If yeah. anybody didn't catch the joke right there, and it has been <laughs> a thorn in the side of Winthrop University, who have not been able to get purchase in this game, let alone on the enemy support. Kushat Barrage to get some vision down. Poke on to the Zin Zhao. And with the Baron buff, they're hoping to squeeze out more damage onto a turret, maybe take this one down with the buff. It's looking promising. They probably can't finish it off because their wave is about to go down, but, oh wow. I oh, mean, that's just a death yeah, thrash. Yeah. Yeah, that is the impressive range of a Huey and an Ezreal. You know, uh, Aesol was an exciting pick when we saw, but then <laughs> once we saw the answers, we realized, yeah, you can't really do much in that range. Thresh nope. definitely can't do much in that range. Xin Zhao struggling himself here, as Blue Otter are just hitting all of this poke. Just oppressive on the Winthrop, as they cannot do anything but watch as their turrets start to fall. And you guys remember all that time they spent trying to kill Rovex earlier on for him to get away? That was time they could have spent clearing out some more vision. What little vision they did get? I mean, Kangas, just look at the mini-map on that bottom side of the yeah. map. It is all red all the way down to the mid lane where their tier 2 is supposed uh, to be. Like, look at this. Observer, can, can we get blue vision? Yeah. I, I, I want to see it already. from blue side. I want to see it from blue side. This okay, is red side. No, there you yeah, go. Like, how are you supposed to walk in here? There, you have no idea what's going on. Uh, yeah, you just get hit by a fear, oh, a we're bone just skewer. Rovex with the bone skewer pulls back. Shookies has to flash away here. Lawrence was on the flank and Winthrop. Oh. They have no business walking up to this Dragon Soul, but they kind of have to because if that goes over, it's just game and it might just be game now. Shookies picked off yet again. As Blue Otter, their wave will get pulled. Can't push in for the turrets. But they can just peel back and get this Dragon Soul for free. Yep. There's no way Winthrop can walk up. No, that is the soul. Infernal, we already talked about how powerful it is going to be in a poke comp like this one. And Blue Otter, I mean, once they secure this, this game is pretty much all in their pocket. It would take some monumental throws for them to lose all the control that they've got. Because, Kegis, let me tell you something. It is a sad day on Summoner's Rift when an Ezreal can E forward, get hooked by a Thresh, and just and walk away. Now. No yeah. summoner spells, yeah. just says, you're not taking this, buddy, and he doesn't. That's a rough story, rough tale to follow here. Yeah. That is the tale of Winthrop University in this game. Is Three. he 1v1 Sword again? one v one by Robex in the side lane. Well then, Support, by uh, the way. that's basically just the state of the game. I know we said it last game, it was over at 10K gold lead. This time around, Blue Otter with the Infernal Soul in a 7K gold lead seems to be the same. They had a close game one, dominated game two. This game, maybe not as dominant, but still very impressive from the Blue Otter squad. They are looking like the favorites in this series right now. And winning the series would get them at match point keg is Blue Otter playing for the last match in the promotion tournament. That last spot in the NACL. And if they knock down Winthrop, there is only one opponent between them and Summer Split. And that is lit 
who is watching the series, waiting to see who their opponent is going to be. It means so much for players like Music. We've talked about his story already. He uh, was in the last promotion tournament and actually, unfortunately, one of the players to get relegated. Fun fact, lost back-to-back -back, uh, NACL qualifying series. One against Mirage and then one against Lit. They already got revenge against Mirage. They yeah. want revenge against Lit. So first up, it's Winthrop University in front of them, but if they can close out this series, then we will get the rematch for Music. He could eliminate the two teams that eliminated him last time around. And this fight could be the end of game three right here. Music jumps in on the sword, big knockup, sword down, he's out. And that is all the chances for Winthrop University. No shot that Mobility is able to do enough. But as I said, maybe I spoke too soon. Nobody's hit Mobility. The Aphelios is free firing in this fight. And Denethor also picks up a kill. Winthrop University are showing signs of life Look here. Perfect. Fighting through the Infernal Soul. No easy task. But Mobility found a way to get his damage out. Yeah, they were making a lot of space for him, but the problem is you still have so much threat to worry about here. Yeah, the death from below is gone, but you just can't interact with this range. That inhibitor is still gonna go down. You still can't walk up, and Blue Otter still very much the favorites in this game three. Yeah, Lynx and Sammy Ken were basically untouched, and they have so much range to play with it. You're right, Winthrop cannot walk up. Oh, they didn't lose there. It looked really bad as soon as Sword went down. Because He'll get another shot, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be any easier for that <laughs> next shot. Blue Otter no. can just walk up to this Barret and start smacking it. Right, and really, that side of the map, once again, as it has been pretty much for the entire Rift, these last 10 to 15 minutes, is just all dark for Winthrop. They just don't know what's going on here. Now, Chookies is finally taking a second to give them some glorious vision, Kangas, as... Uh, Lawrence and Robex are just going to go ahead and, and take it away here. So we saw an example of that last fight on what a decent fight for Winthrop looks like. Now, Mobility, he's at three items. Has the LDR, has the IE. So if he's able to free hit and somehow get damage on Lynx and Samikin, that's, that's the way in the game. Yeah, the Ike on the Ike. flank. Lawrence on the flank. Oh, they're sandwiched. Turf University are about to get corralled right now. In the middle, oh, Mobility oh. just gets shoved almost one shot from two abilities. Back up to half health. He's going to try and heal off of these Raptors. Robex will hope to not give him that opportunity. Yeah. As also, what a split game state. This is so awkward for Winthrop. Yeah, I also think Mobility, he's trying to switch the guns up too because green, purple, not great for the Aphelios, but look at while Robex Point. is being annoying, the Baron's gone. Yeah, uh, I, Winthrop, stuck. they have no shot. Yeah. They maybe pick off Robex here. That actually would be big news. All right, Rovex, eh. bit of an oopsie right there. Didn't need to buy that much time for the team, but that is Baron picked up for Blue Otter. Now, what can Winthrop get done with a 5v4 on the map for the next 30 seconds? Um, actually interact with waves. That's going to be it. 25 seconds on Rovex. I four people still have a Baron buff. It doesn't matter. I Rovex here is, this is literally all those memes you've seen where like, hey, be annoying mid lane while we sneak the Baron. And that's what Rovex is doing right now. They yeah. just didn't know, or they realize, ah, we can't do anything here. Let's just, let's just kill this guy. Oh, it was the root for mobility. He had the Gravitum. Well done. I mean, you can't dodge that. It's just an auto attack and then a root. So Rovex did get locked down and the team could follow up. Ah, but he's back. Talking about the gun selection from the Aphelios, you know. Yeah. <laughs> did come up, look at that. Hey, fair enough, fair enough. I, it's better now. I was, I was just saying green and purple together. Eh. Yeah. Not my favorite, uh, but now Winthrop, they did get themselves a little bit of breathing room, and that gives them a tiny bit of an opportunity. Elder Drake in 45 seconds. Unfortunately for them, all the problems they have this game, they're still here, especially if Denethor ends up getting caught out. The range at which you can interact with this comp is just not favorable to you. So now the hope is that Sword can get some serious damage in, and the Denethor can find the angle. He went the glass cannon build. Oh! If, oh. oh, look at that damage out of Xin Zhao. Has to throw out the ultimate earlier. That feels bad. Which means no Xin Zhao ult now. Crescent Guard is down. Oh, and he just no dies Zin. anyway! Sammy Kid! What a performance from this mid laner. He knew. He was one of the guys in line in the conversation what? for NACL, but he's got to earn it himself in a promotion tournament and performances like hold this. Hold on, hold on. 
are what it's all about. Did I see the Raptors cancel Denethor's recall? I, my eyes must deceive me. I mean, regardless, maybe we can see the replay because that actually is just so confusing to me. What matters though is that Elder Drake, 10 gate gold lead. You feel amazing. This is end the game. Let's just let's just wrap okay. it up. Okay. Water are sending a couple members Hi. forward, and that's a rampage for Lynx. Gets killed to mobility with the burn from the Elder Dragon. Winthrop thought maybe, just maybe, we can find a pick at the Baron. But it's the tankiest member. Lawrence doesn't go down, and now Blue Water are marching in to the base of Winthrop. They're gonna have to find a miracle defense here with only Sword and Denethor to do damage. Xin Zhao is definitely not a scaling champion. He's not gonna be doing too much in this type of situation here. How cleanly can Blue Water close this one out? All five members up. They're catching the top wave. Supers are pushing in mid. Big damage onto Xin Zhao. He has to flash away. They're not letting him get out. He will finally make it back to the fountain, but it's Sword that goes down as payment. And there you have it. Blue wow. Water with the comeback in the series will go up 2-1 and are on match point. I, game one must have been a download of some sorts, Kangas, because ever since then, it's just been Blue Water, Blue Water, and Blue Otter. We have a replay yep. of the last fight, so we're going to see how this one unfolded. I, I'm going to be real, the game ended way before this fight happened. Yeah, this game uh, got out of hand very quickly. University. It all started with this. Oh, we'll actually get another look to see. I believe we did a confirmation that the Raptors stopped Denethor's back, but look at this snipe. Just... Yeah, but could, could we like talk about where the Raptors were coming from? Oh no, it was the Wolves. Okay, that makes way okay. more sense. Wolves I... come over the wall. Because think about that where they'd have so to come funny, from. Man. I, that just feels bad. I, ever since they changed how patience works for uh, jung jungle camps, we've seen some wacky things. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, data would have made too big of a difference. No, nope, not at all. It still wasn't up, but no. It's yeah. still funny to see regardless. Blue Otter Esports get the Elder Dragon and then fight at the Baron. That was the last ditch effort for Winthrop, thinking maybe we can find a pick onto Lawrence on the top side. Lawrence was too tanky, too far ahead. And Blue Otter now ahead in the series. One more Blue game, one. and they get to go against Lit Esports as the rematch for Music, and winning this rematch as Winthrop were the team to knock them into the lower bracket to begin with. We're gonna send it to a short break before we're back for what could be the final game of the day. You won't wanna miss it. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. I mean, all I'm going to say is, like, I'm 100% winner in the promotion tournament. That's, like, where I shine the, the most. I was expecting to do a lot better than ninth place. We didn't really click very well towards like the middle of the season. We kind of got in our own heads a little bit. And that kind of showed in our games. Our team always said like, oh, we're we're not a scrim team, we're a stage team. So as soon as we lost that first match, it was like a reality check. Obviously, it didn't go well. No one would say that our season went well. Individually, I had pretty solid performances, more toward the first half than the second half. A lot of us are pretty happy with the way the roster has ended up for this promotion tournament and we picked up more pieces that we're more confident in and that are binding as players better together uh there's not as much conflict as there was so i think the only result that can happen is that we're gonna promote again well my last run in the promotion tournament was awesome we were like the big underdogs who came up beat all the best teams and promoted so that was really awesome honestly like i just want to live that moment again because that was probably one of the best moments like in my career, just winning that promotion tournament. We only need to win two best of fives to keep ourselves alive. And I'm pretty confident about that. I'm not gonna lie. Even though we're relegating this time around and start promoting, we're not nervous or anything. I'm like pretty confident. Like the level of play, it's not insanely high. And I think that we can get to a point where we're pretty safe. It's a stressful environment, but we've you're used to that kind of environment. We've been there before. Some of us, we've already promoted before. So if we've done it once, why can't we do it again? While some of the other teams, they haven't really been in uh, these high tense situations. For example, I'd say like CCG have a lot of newer players. And I think maybe maybe the nerves might get to them. Maybe they won't, but you know, it's something to think about at least. We didn't watch any of the games, but we did scrim three out of the four teams in qualifiers right now. I haven't really watched it too much. 
not gonna lie like if if at all as long as i am focused on myself and going into game and i'm confident like it doesn't really matter who my opponent is i'm confident i'll beat them i have watched the qualifiers i've seen what everybody's capable of i've seen how teams have grown i don't know whether to be thankful or or to be disappointed because i i would be sweating if i had to play against yujin i'd be getting my handkerchief out and wiping sweat off my forehead if i had to play against that guy i don't want to beat winthrop we have like a 0% win rate against them. I, I became pretty close with them during the time I was in NACL. So like I banter with a lot of their teammates. What do you think about Yukino over on CCG? I mean, he's a, he's a good player though. But he eagles too much. Yukino, I'm gapping you, bro. You better watch out. Crimson has gotten a lot better over the past two to three years. He has grown a lot in top lane. Like he's a formidable player now. And in fact, I would expect to see him in NACL pretty soon. All the bot lanes are actually pretty good, so I'm excited to play against all of them. I love Shogo. I'm excited to play against him. Lynx and Instinct. And mobility is really good too, so I'm just excited to take them all down. Uh, we all had different goals, but I know me and Rockman especially are trying our hardest because we want to get into LCS. In order to do that, we kind of have to keep our position in NACL and not relegate. So just trying our hardest to just perform and showcase our skill again for next split. I think we're keeping our spot because we are the better players. <laughs> as robotic of an answer as that was, it's uh, it's just the truth. To be honest, the end of the season was pretty rough for us. We took a week break and kind of just, everyone just focused on themselves a little bit. We all kind of relaxed a little bit, focused on ourselves, got better overall. And then going into the next week of scrims, we started to do a lot better. So I'm excited to see how that continues with the rest of the week of scrims going into the promotion tournament. And shout out to my teammates. I mean, we've, we've gone through a lot, even if we relegate or don't relegate. It was fun, right? I guess. Have fun with all of you guys. I just want to say, don't count me out. Like I'm coming. They just added Jinx into the meta. Hyperkires are back. Like it, it's over for you guys. Oh, I've been on losing teams more than like anyone else on in an ACL. You know, I was on Team Gates, I was on Phoenix One, I was on Optic, I was on Immortals. I know how to keep strong mental.